future grandchildren that I don't have yet, and my, dis and my other family members, that they would come to know the Lord before they died. But then I felt, uh, later on, a couple of days later, I was like, man, that's kind of pathetic. <laughs> I mean, my last day, I want to enjoy it, go fishing or do something. But then I, I said, what, what would Jesus do? I remember, hey, Jesus did know his last day on earth. And what did he do? He prayed. He prayed for himself, saying, saying, Father, if this is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then the angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. And, beaten in, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly than his, <clears throat> then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. So he prayed for himself pretty hard that day, that he would be able to endure what was going to come up within the next few hours. And then he also prayed, I lost the page here, <laughs> bear with me, it's in John, he prayed for his disciples, which would be our family members. He said, I do not pray that you should take them out of this world, but that you would keep them from the evil one. Then he also prayed for us, the ones off in the distance, my grandchildren that I don't know. <laughs> and he said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those whose will believe, who will believe me who will believe in me through the disciples' words. So then I thought, wow, I, I did what Jesus did. <laughs> I, I want to do what Jesus did. I prayed instead of worrying about the earthly things. So I, was, I had a moment of, wow, you read the word, and in important times that word comes back out and brings it to your memory. So. Pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that when we read it and in times of needs that it comes forth back into our memories. Lord, I also pray for today's service that you'll bless the, the word that Greg brings forth. We pray that our worship is a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. Hopefully I'm not too loud. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten this close to the mic yet. But if I am, I guess the guys upstairs can turn me back a little bit, turn me down a little bit. If you'll join us this morning, we're going to just take the next little while. We're going to we're gonna just everything, all your, all your cares, all your problems, all your concerns, if you have any. I know we all got them. It's just set them aside for the next little while and let's just let's just approach the throne of grace and let's just worship the king this morning for he is exalted the king he is exalted on high and i will praise him that's the first song we're going to do he is exalted let's lift him high this morning give him the glory the honor and the praise that he's so worthy of for he has promised that He would come and he would inhabit the praises of his people. You know, we all come from different places as we gather together here this morning. Some, some of us are on mountaintops, some of us are in valleys, some of us are dealing with different types of struggles. But you know what? There's one thing we have in common is that we've come to worship the King and we've come here to hear from God not just as a religious practice, but we want to hear from you, O oh Lord, this morning. We're calling upon you, King of kings, Lord of lords, that you would come and you would make yourself known to us. Lord, we know that your presence, you're on the present, you're everywhere all the time. We don't have to ask you to show up because you're already there. If I go to the depths of the sea, there you are. The highest mountain, there you are. 
Lord, we know you're here this morning. We're just asking you to just to move and to, to, to allow us to uh, a new awareness of your presence. For you are exalted, O King. You're exalted this morning. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise His
give life You are love You bring light To the darkness You give hope You restore Every heart That is broken Where are you Lord? It's your
microphone could turn back. Just turn it down just a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of feedback. I think that's what it is. Thank you. Hallelujah. this song.
stand and say that today for God you've, you've promised and you've always fulfilled your promises Lord you've never never left us without without hope without the peace that we need Lord God even in the midst of storm trial, tribulation Lord God you're always there you're everything your love oh God endures forever. Over the mountains and the seas your river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down Oh yeah I'm gonna sing of your love Sing of your love forever Over the mountains, let's sing it. Over the mountains and the sea, the river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth.
it's foolishness I know Oh, but when the world has seen the light They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now I could sing a good up, never runs out on me, Lord, even when I don't know what to do with myself, Lord, you just keep loving me, you keep calling me back, so you are mine, and I am yours, and there's nothing that can separate you from the love that I have for you, says the Lord our God, hmm. hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessing and glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Though your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of your heart All my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God from the top I love you Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing it out. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every 
regret that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire darkest night You were close like no other I've known you as a father
here today we thank you Lord for making yourself known to us in a, in a real way this morning as we lift up your name as we glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we bring a sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord for there's none like you oh God just tell him this morning just tell him how you feel about him just tell him that you love him God, I love you. I thank you for, for all the times you've rescued me. For the hope that you bring to my life, oh God. For the peace that you bring to my life, oh God. For the joy. For the righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God, is what the scripture says. Oh, the joy of the Lord 
is our strength. Lord, we exalt you today. We magnify you, Lord, for there's none like you. None like you. Just give him a minute, will you? For I'm no longer a slave to fear. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Thanks to you, Lord. Oh, I am a child of God. No, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Thank you, Lord, that we can say that today. The blood of Jesus washes away all of our sins, provides everything we need, the name above all names, for there is no other name. Jesus, Jesus, There is none like you. 
in all the earth. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, how I love you so. There is none like you in all the earth, in all the earth. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Blessed Jesus, there is none like you in all the earth. Blessing and glory and honor, praise be to the King who is our God. He's alive forevermore. He's coming again. He's coming again. been saying that for 2,000 years, but it's as true then as it is today. He's coming again, for He does not lie. He cannot lie. Our God has promised He will come back for His bride. Hallelujah. If I do one more, do you?
Father God, we just thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and worship you. Thank you for all you're doing in our lives, each and every one here, Lord, through this church, Lord. Again, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to just come in and give you praise. And thank you for Carl and the worship team and, and just ushering us into that spirit. Lord, I just pray that as we get ready to move forward with the service and Brother Greg comes up to preach a word, Father God, that you just have laid on his heart, Lord, that we just have ears to hear. Lord, allow your word to be received by us, Father God, and just give him the strength and the boldness that he needs, Lord, to deliver the word that you have laid upon his heart, Father God. And I just thank you again for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, brother. Can we give a hand to Carl? He's done such a great job over the past few weeks. And thank you for bringing us into that spirit because I didn't want to interrupt. Jesse was like, hey, you got to do announcements. And he was just filling the spirit and going with it. And I wasn't going to interrupt him. So um, I probably could have went another half hour, but I know Greg got to teach. So, <laughs> but I was going to say, I was going to say, um, but um, today is uh, Buddy Barrel Day. So who's got their Buddy Barrels? I hear a few of them out there. Well, in the absence of Pastor Robin, what does she say? We'll take hundreds, fifties, thousands. So if you guys got those, we even take checks. And reminder with checks, hi, Connor. Everybody wave to Connor. That's my little three-year-old up in the window. So for those watching from home, sorry you can't see, but he's up in the nursery looking out the window. Um, but with those who have their body barrels, bring them on up. And don't forget an M&M. Again, as Pastor Robin would remind us, M&M, mission-minded. Thank you, Ms. Pat, for passing those out. And while they're doing that, just as a reminder, next week, for those of us who are members, uh, next Sunday, after the morning service, it is our annual business meeting. So please come and attend as there's many, many things to discuss. With the Buddy Barrel, I know we have all the little barrels and maybe have given some hundreds, fifties, thousands, um, or even wrote a check. But that is also a reminder that for River City Church, um, the offering plates for regular tithes and offerings and for today being Mission Sunday, um, just reminder that we're not passing the plate around to please bring it up. Or if you give online, it's River City AG. Dot com you could give online and thanks to mr. Steven we've now have a new way of also giving that once you set up you could even start to text your tithe in as well so uh, a couple different ways in giving um, now as well and March 6th just as a reminder Greg I'm not going to ask is it's the all famous question and it was asked last week about the pancakes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just come hungry. That's all we got to say. You know, hungry not only for food, but also hungry for God's word. So 10 a.m. downstairs in the fellowship hall, uh, men's powerhouse breakfast, you know, come wearing masks, social distancing, all that other fun jazz that's still going on for a year now. And then also March 6th in the evening is praise and prayer. So please feel free to come on and worship with us and usher into God's presence as we seek him. Um, for what his plan is for this year and you know just for our church and what we are uh, doing so uh, that again is March 6th it's 6 30 and I believe that is all that is all so and on the back of the bulletin it's light but please keep uh, up to date with the bulletin or look on our Facebook pages we keep you guys well informed that being said my time is short today and brother Greg come on up and bless us with the word
Good morning, church. Carl, what a fantastic job of praise and worship this morning. I just want to thank you. Uh, it's it's great whenever you know you have a tough week or a tough day, or and you can just lay it all aside and come to worship and praise God. It just seems like all that goes away. So let's pray, Father God, as we come before you this morning, Lord. Lord, we're here to worship you. We're here to give you glory. Father God, I would just ask you now to use me, for, Lord, as a vessel for your glory. And Father God, give the people ears to hear what the Spirit would have for them this morning. Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come up here, Lord. And Father God, I just ask you now to bless us as we will continue to bless you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, this morning, uh, basically, about three weeks ago, I uh, was sitting in Bible, in, 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 in our Bible teaching on Wednesday nights. A uh, pastor had said something that really struck me, and the Lord started to work in me during, this period, during that period of time, and uh, I just want to share this with you this morning. You know, we've been talking about our church as being, you know, one church, one mission, one purpose. And God wants to use each and every one of us in order for us to get there. We heard Jesse preach about the gifts that God freely bestows upon each and every believer. Uh, and you have to believe that. If you don't believe it, then you're not going to operate in the gifts that God has planted in you. The Word tells us that whenever we come to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, not only does the Holy Spirit come and come into us and take up residence within us, but He places a gift within us. And that gift is to be used for the glory of God. And then we hear about, we've heard about being in the midst of the storm. And how many of us realize that we're really in the midst of a storm right now? I mean, there's so many things that are going on, not only in this world, but in this church, okay? There's so many things that are happening. Uh, you look at Texas, you know, you look at the coronavirus, you look at all the fires that have happened, all the destruction that has taken place, to, you know, down south in other parts of the country. All right, we see our, we see our democracy in turmoil. All right, and these are all things that have come about, and we're in the midst of all this, and we're in the midst of this stirring up of this storm that is happening amongst us. But we're also told. And it's also been said and also prophesied in this church that we are going to go to the other side. The storm is going to cease. The calm is going to happen. Okay? Because you see, God is still on the throne. God still has the power. So many times we look at, you know, the Bible tells us that we are, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is not against each other. Our battle is against the principalities and authorities of this world. We have to understand that God is in control of all things. And there's a purpose and a reason and a plan for what is going on. You know, Solomon, in all of his glory, understood people, I think, better than a lot of us. He understood what people were going to do and how they were going to turn away from God, how they were going to move away, how they were going to sin against each other. See, he understood this. And even in the dedication of the temple, the title of my message this morning is Solomon's Prayer. 
And I think it is so important for us even today to look at this and understand what Solomon was saying to God during this prayer. We hear this verse all the time, and it could be found in 2 Chronicles 7, 12 through 15. It says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and chosen this place for myself as a house. Whoops, I'm sorry. Am I? Yes. A house of sacrifice. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive the sins and heal their land. But you have to understand that when God was speaking this, this was came to Solomon in a dream. This was after the dedication. This was after Solomon's prayer. The Lord came to Solomon and said, If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, ask for forgiveness. You see, Solomon prayed this in his prayer. He petitioned God seven times with seven different requests. We could find this in 2 Chronicles four, chapter 6, verses 12 through 40. And I'm going to take the time to read this. When I'm done, we're going to go back and look at a few of these petitions, a few of these requests that Solomon made. In, chapter, and in verse 12, it says, Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord. Now, now, this is, you have to realize that this is during the dedication of the temple. Solomon is standing up on a platform. He's kneeling down before the people of Israel. So, all of Israel is gathered to hear this because they're in anticipation of, of the, the temple that Solomon was dedicating to the Lord. And it says, Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. For Solomon had made a, a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, three cubits high, and set it in the midst of the court. And he stood on it, knelt down on his knees before the, all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you who keep your covenant and mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father. You have spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand. All it is this day. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man, man sit before me on the throne of Israel. Only if your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my laws that you have walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and, behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God, and listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you. That your eyes may be open toward this temple day and night, toward the place where you said you would put your name, that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes towards this place. 
And may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. <coughs> if anyone sins against his neighbor, this is supplication number one, or petition number one. If anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath, and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteousness by giving him according to his righteousness. Or if your people Israel are defeated before, any, before an enemy because they have sinned against you and return and confess your name and pray, make supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave them and their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, when they pray towards his place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight, or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemies besiege them in, the, in their lands and cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, <coughs> excuse me, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spreads out his hands to this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men, that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which, you're, which you gave to your fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outreached arm, when they come and pray in this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all which the foreigner calls to you, to you, that all peoples on the earth may know your name and fear you as you do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built, built is called by your name. When you go, when your people go out to battle against their enemies, whenever you send them, and whenever they pray to you towards this city, which you have chosen, and the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their clause. Clause. Sorry. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, and take them captive to the land far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land where they were carried captive and repent and make supplication to you in the land of, of their captivity, saying, we have sinned, we have done wrong, we have committed wickedness, and when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive and pray toward the land which you have given to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, toward the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now may God, I pray, let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. I'm going to bring out three of these requests, or th three of these petitions that God, that Solomon prayed to God, okay? Because I believe that this, this is where the church is today. I believe that this is what we need to do as a church, all right, in order to get to the other side. 
This is what God has spoken to me. This is what God had given me. So I'm going to give it to you. Request number one is, is that if anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath or comes and takes an oath before you, you are altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked by bringing his way on his own head and justifying the righteousness given him according to his righteousness. You know, so many times we have to ask ourselves, and I've been doing this for the last couple of weeks, do I hold any animosity, any anger, any resentment against anyone? Because if I do, I am going against what God has told me to do. How can I expect to be forgiven of those things that I need to be forgiven for? And believe me when I tell you, folks, I am a sinner. Okay? I am a sinner saved by grace, but I am a sinner. I do wrong. I get angry. I get upset. I get frustrated. Okay? There's times that I just want to say, at all, okay? But the truth of the matter is, is, is that you see, at these times, I need to understand that I am under grace, that I need to not only ask God to forgive me for those things, but I need to repent. I need to God, ask God to strengthen me so that, you see, I can get through these things. The reality is, is how many people inside this church may be holding anger against someone else inside this church? And these are supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Or how many family members are angry with other family members because of maybe something that they did, something that they said, something that happened. We as people of God need to understand that we need to forgive, that we need to be able to forgive them. Do not hold that grudge or that anger or that resentment. You see, Solomon knew what the people of Israel and how they were. Just like us. They were mere people. They got angry. They got upset. They may have even cursed their God. But thank God today we're not under the law, but we're under grace. So that we can ask for forgiveness. We can come to church on a Sunday morning with a clean heart if we're willing to repent. We want to see the glory of God fall in this place. So many people say, well, this is Old Testament. But the truth of the matter is, is, is that, yes, we're no longer under the law. We're under grace, thank God, through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the death and resurrection. But yet, we are commanded to love our neighbor as ourselves. Believe it or not, that temple that Moses dedicated on that day has been transferred from that temple to us. Because we, the church, the people in this church are temples of the living God. We know we now hold the Holy of Holies, the power of the Holy Spirit within us because God knew that no temple that man had built would ever be able to hold the glory of God. 
through Christ's death and resurrection, we become the temple of the living God. These commands, these prayers, hold as much value as what they did back then. Let us go to let us go to request no, before I let us go to request number three and, and request number four. Request number three says, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you. When they pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants. Your people Israel, that you may teach them a good way in which they should walk and send no rain on your land which you have given to your people as an inheritance. So many times today, I feel like we're in a famine. Like I said, I, to Carl, I thank you for ushering us into the, the presence of the Lord. That spiritual rain, okay, is like a freshness. It's like a, a morning dew. And when you enter into that spiritual rain, all those things that may have been going on in the course of the week just kind of disappear. And you get washed. And you get cleaned. Okay? Instead of walking around saying, well, what, what has God done for me lately? Look what I'm going through. Look at this. Look at that. Okay? And you walk around in this famine and this dryness and this you know, you're, you're withering and you're, you're, you're dying. Literally, you're dying. And what greater way than to come in here on a Sunday morning and just feel that spiritual rain raining upon you, giving you life again, giving you the ability to step out of these doors, possibly, and to go out and face the next week. You know, so many times what I say is, is like, this is my spiritual gas station. You see, if you're doing the will of God, if you're doing the things that God is calling you to do, believe me, by the time you get in here on Sunday morning, you're, you're pretty empty. You're pretty well done. Oh, the work in many cases that God has for you to do is trying. You're giving of yourself. You're giving of the Spirit of God. You're giving. You're giving. You're giving, you're giving, and you're giving. What greater place to come than to come in here on a Sunday morning and get that spiritual gas tank filled up again so that you can go out and do it again next week. You know, to get filled up with glory. And believe me, we could do this on our own. But the truth of the matter is, is, is that the church is here for a purpose and a reason. God inhabits the praises of his people. When two or more are gathered in my name, I am present. Okay? God is here. And God wants to fill us here. Why? So that we can do the work that God has called us to do. Just like the people of Israel. God had a work for them to do. Unfortunately, they didn't fulfill it either. And that's the reason why we have the second covenant. Because of Israel may have done what God had purposed them to do, and that is to bring others into the faith. This is what we need to do. The third petition is this. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight, or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows his own burden in his own grief, 
and spread out his hands. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive. And give to everyone according to his ways, whose heart you know. For you know, you alone know the hearts of the Son of Man, that they may fear you to walk in your ways as they live in the land which, your, which you gave to our fathers. It wasn't until after this prayer, it wasn't until after these petitions, it wasn't until then that God spoke in the second dream to Solomon. See, God answered that prayer. We use this prayer, and I hear a lot of people using the, this response that God gave to Solomon. And they use it in order to build up the church. But what God was saying to Solomon was, yes, I heard your prayer. But this is what the people need to do in order for me to fulfill the promise that I've given them. We have to understand that God's name rests on the church as it did in his temple. That we are his holy priests. Through Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that are pleasing to God. So in other words, in today's, where we are at today, we can offer these spiritual sacrifices to God. Repentance. We need to find a place where we can come before God and repent. Ask God to forgive us. In 1 Peter 2, verses 4 and 5, it says this. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, coming in him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We have to realize that not only are we temples of the living God, we're a royal priesthood. You see, we have a mission. Our church, this mission is to love God and to love people. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you're holding animosity and anger towards people, then how can you love them? How can you show compassion to someone, okay? And I understand that people are going to hurt you. People are going to say things that are going to hurt you. My wife and I ran a recovery house for 15 years. I've been called everything but, and so has my wife. I have been stolen, people have stolen from us, people have taken from us, people have used us, people have abused us, but you know what? I forgive them. Why? Because you see, I understand that my battle is not with them, but it's against the principalities and authorities that are in this world. So if you 
have the spirit of addiction over you, then you are going to be controlled by that spirit. And it's that spirit that is using you to attack the children of God. But see, we have to understand this. So why should I get angry at an individual when I know the spirit that is controlling that individual? So what do I do? I pray against the spirit. God has gifted me with the spiritual gifts to be able to do that. <coughs> you see, Satan is even right now trying to take my voice. Why? Because he does, God, he does not want you to hear this. If you're going to walk in victory, then you need to realize that your battle is not against people. It's against what is controlling people. It is against what is coming up in this world. The enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And if people, the, our job is to uplift, to give, to love, to be kind. But we come in opposition. You see, in order for the, us to reach the other side, in order for us to get out of the storm, we have to understand the storm. Jesus spoke to the storm. He didn't speak to his apostles and say, Get some faith. He spoke to the storm. We need to speak to the storm. You see, when, when Solomon dedicated this temple to God, the glory of God fell in that temple. It said it was like a cloud. That even the priests couldn't enter the temple because the glory of God was so strong. But Solomon knew people. He knew that people were going to sin against God just like us. But we have to realize that we have the ability to repent. We have the ability to turn away. We have the ability to ask God for forgiveness. And by the grace of God and through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We can only do this through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 3, 11 and 12, This is John the Baptist speaking. And he's baptizing in the Jordan. And this is what he says. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out the th threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with, with unquenchable fire. He will give you the Holy Spirit and fire. What's the fire for? It's to burn up the chaff. See, it's to make you the holy one, the holy priesthood. It's to burn up those things that are in you. It's to burn up the sin. You see, he says that he will gather his wheat into his barn. 
only after the chaff has been has been cleaned. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. You see, God understands that we are human. But that doesn't justify our sins. Because you see, what God wants to do is, is that through the He has given you the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he knew you couldn't do it on your own. He's empowered you. Now, are you going to receive that power? Or are you going to be able to speak to those storms that are in your life and be say, be still? Are you going to be able to forgive your neighbor of your, their offenses? And even God knew that it was going to be difficult for you to do that. But yet he tells us in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36, he says, But I say to you, you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully Use you. To him who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other also. And for him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from him, he, him who takes away your goods, do not ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do them likewise. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those you know, who love them. It's easy to love it, people that love you back. Okay, I love my wife. All right, and I can stand up here and very easily tell you that. Why? Because she loves me. I love my children. Why? Because they love me. I love the people in this church. Why? Because I believe that they love me. Okay? It's very easy to love people who love you. But it goes on. And it says, where am I at here? Okay? And if you lend to those for whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your fathers also is merciful. If we want to see the glory of God fall in this place, if we want to be a church that is, a, is effective, that goes out, that speaks love, that goes out into the world without fear, knowing that you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, to go out to those that have cursed you, those that have talked bad about you. If we are going to be a church that is going to reach this neighborhood for Christ, we need to love them. We need to show compassion to them. We need to be open to receive them. You see, the truth is, if we are not that type of church, then it is not going to happen. And that is why pastor preached upon the unified church. We, as a church, need to become 
one body. We have many members of that body, but one purpose. And that purpose is to go out into our neighborhoods, into our communities, into the areas that God has taken us, into our workplaces, into our families, into our homes, and show the love of Christ. We cannot do this on our own. But through the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that is within us, we can. And like I said, thank God today we live in the time of grace instead of the time of law. But you know what? I serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't think that God cannot hold back the rain, allow things to happen in order to get our attention. Because I think he's doing it. I think he's really trying to get our attention. I think he's really calling to his church and say, Church! I'm bringing this stuff. I'm allowing these things to happen. Why? So you turn back to me. Because if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will ask for forgiveness, will look back to me, I will heal your land. I believe that God is saying, this is an attention getter. This is a time in the midst of the storm that Jesus wants to stand up and speak to the storm and say, be calm. And we'll end up on the other side. You see, but it's up to us. We are the church. We are the living temple. We are the royal priesthood. We are empowered by the power of the living God to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to this hurting and dying generation. It is us. No one else is going to do it. You have been given that authority. You have been commanded by God to go out into the world. God has given us two commandments. And they are, Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, all the law of the prophets stand. Love your neighbor. Love God. You say you love God, you better love your neighbor. Because if the love of God is in you, then the love of God is going to work through you to love others. That's the truth. You see, let's not sugarcoat this. You are empowered. You have been given a task. You have been given the authority to speak into the midst of the storms and say, be still in the name of Jesus. 
we as a church need to start repenting and asking God for forgiveness. We need to uphold the truth. We need to love our neighbor as ourselves, as difficult as that may be. Because believe me, when the enemy sees a church that is doing what God has called him to do, he is going to attack that church. He is going to bring a storm in the midst of this church, and he has done it. But you should be saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because I know I must be doing what God is calling us to do because we're being attacked. If you are a passive church and you weren't doing anything, guess what? The enemy could care less. And around the world, there are many churches that are there for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is for themselves. And I pray for those churches. But when a church gets on fire for God, for those that are hurting, those that are lost, when that church starts to get on fire, the enemy is going to rear his ugly head and he is going to attack you in every way possible in order to subdue you. But you need to speak to the enemy and say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. I demand that you go back to the abyss where you belong. And as a church, we got to be willing. We got to, you know, we come here on Saturday nights once a, once a month to pray, to seek, to ask God to fill us, to ask God to move upon this community. Well, guess what? If we're not moving within the community, it isn't going to happen. We're waiting for the glory of God to fall in this house. Why? You got to start asking yourself why. Is it to make it easier so that people are just want to come into church? So you don't have to do the work of going out into the world? You know, revival starts within. We are the temple. So when the cloud of glory falls in the temple, guess what's going to happen? We're going to want to go out. We're going to go out. We're going to want to seek. We wanna, we're going to go talk to our loved ones, to those, our neighbors, and so forth and so on about the love of Christ. And when that starts happening and the glory of God falls in this place, okay, then we will be prepared. Jesse talked about the gifts. Start operating the gifts that God has given you. Why? Because then, whenever the time comes that you need those gifts the most, you'll be able to function within those gifts. This is like school. Okay? But we're getting ready. As Carl talked about this morning, he's coming back. But he's coming back for his bride. He's coming back. Are you ready? Are you prepared for his coming? This is what we need to ask ourselves. Have I given enough? Have I showed God my love, his love to others? Have I been compassionate? Have I been understanding? Okay. Or have I been bitter and angry and resentful because somebody said something about me? 
You know, if you want to talk about somebody, please talk about me. Leave somebody else alone. All right. And I'm sure there's other people in this church who probably feel the same way. Talk about me. All right. Because I'll rebuke it. I'll speak against it. All right. But I'll still love you. All right. Just like as Mark is getting dressed here in the middle of the service. Okay. I didn't think it was going to take me that long, this long. Praise God. But you, you see, we have to do this with joy. All right? We have to do it with joy. And we can, this morning, we came into the presence of God. Did you come into the presence of God with joy? Are you thankful? Let's be real. Are you thankful for what God has given you? No? Are you thankful for the life that you now have? There again, Carl and I were kind of talking about that before the service. All right? I mean, a lot of people know my testimony. Okay? And those that, that don't, I'm not going to get into it this morning. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you see, I came from a very bad place of addiction and so forth. And God, through the grace of Jesus Christ, you see, I was able to turn away from that. I was able to be empowered by the love of God to stand before you even up here today. You see, God took that broken sinner and he turned it into his own glory. But you see, I had to have the wrongness in order for God to allow that to happen. I had to die all the deaths that I had to die when God was burning up that chaff within me, and he still does it. But it's not a bonfire anymore, okay? I mean, I believe, believe me when I tell you, man, there were bonfires that were set because of the chaff that he had to burn up, okay? It lit up the whole city, all right? Now I'm just a little, I get a little twerker now and then, all right? Thank God. Because you see, the word also tells us that God will take us from glory to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory. But you see, I can stand up here today and say, you know what? I'm no better than any one of you that are out there. I'm a sinner saved by grace. All right? And there's hope. There's hope for the lost. There's hope for the dying. There's hope. And that hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for not only bringing us here this morning, Father God, but Lord, I pray that you would just fill your people this day with the power of your spirit. Lord, stir up your spirit within them, Father God, and let them use the gifts that you have so graciously given them. Father God, move upon them and touch them, Lord. But most of all, Lord, set them on fire. Set them on fire for your glory, Lord. Let them go out and speak of your great love. Lord, let us love our enemies. For, Lord, I know that even when you are on the cross, after, that, after they beat you and tortured you and nailed you to that cross, Lord, you said, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. For, Lord, you are a God of love. So, Father God, I just ask you now, Lord, that if we have anything... If we're holding anything against anyone, Lord, Lord, bring it to our attention. And Father God, give us the courage and the strength, Lord, to not only to forgive them, but to move away, to move out of that situation, Father God. So that, Lord, we can be free. We can be free to glorify you. We can be free, Father God to the bondage of the enemy. 
So, Lord, I just ask you now as we leave here to bless each and every individual, Lord, as they continue on during their week. Lord, give them divine appointments. Let them speak of your glory. Use them, Father God, for your glory until we meet next week so that you could fill them back up again, Lord, so that they can go back out and do it all over again. For the battle is tough, Father God, but you are our victor because your word tells us that we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, Lord, strengthen us, empower us. But most of all, Father God, use us for your glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.